Hi folks, welcome to the Prepared Homestead. This is Travis. Thank you all for stopping by to watch. Uh, there's a lot of stuff going on and some of it's pretty much very well out there in the news. Uh, there's also things that are going on behind the scenes. And I'm not gonna go as far out on the limb to say that a lot of the stuff that's happening out in the open is a distraction for the other thing, but it's possible. Um, just some updates on Hurricane Ian. Uh, the latest numbers I saw were well over 2 million people without power and about 13 uh, casualties that have been confirmed dead so far. Uh, it's very likely that that number is going to rise. Uh, not that we want it to, but certainly uh, it's a strong possibility. A lot of damage there. Looks like to be about the third or fourth most powerful hurricane to hit the U.S. coast, so at least down in that area. So it's a, it's a pretty pretty big one, pretty big deal, lots of damage. And like I said this morning, it, it's gonna be a while before we fully understand the full amount of damage that's been done. Uh, keep those folks in your prayers down there in Florida. Uh, and I'm sure that there will be uh, certain, you know, work efforts to try to help raise money or to send people down there. Uh, there's already some people from our group that have gone down there and uh, that's that's what they're doing they're you know there to try to help them rebuild so uh, keep watch for that and if you're able to assist in any way whether money or physical labor or whatever it'd probably be a good thing and then still continue to think about this as a as a as a training and a learning opportunity every time something like this happens uh, don't don't let it all go to waste take the time to observe see how people react to it and then that's a good way that you can adjust your preparedness plan so that you kind of have a better idea of how people will react in your area when something bad goes down. Also, of course, there's all this stuff with Russia, uh, the, the Nord Stream pipelines. Uh, looks like there was another pipeline in, in, in Ukraine, uh, down in Crimea. Um, a lot of stuff is building with this. A lot of stuff. Um, uh, I can't think of his name right now, but uh, one of the U.S. Uh, congressmen or a senator today said uh, that if that if Russia uses a nuke in Ukraine, that that would be considered an attack on NATO. I don't know how you're going to twist that one, but that's what they said. Uh, senator Graham there. I knew I would think of it. Uh, just a lot of stuff going on, but that's not what we're here to talk about today. To hear we're talking about today about one of these things that happens when this kind of stuff's going on and they're able to kind of slip it in uh, here's an article from today federal reserve announces major pilot exercise for esg social credit score system this was from today climate finance is almost identical to that of the chinese communist party social credit score system and so in the article it goes through and it talks about uh, what what they're what and of course it, it, it's a little difficult because it's they use all these legal terms and stuff but uh, if you take the time you can kind of figure it out um, in a statement today this Thursday the Federal Reserve said six of the nation's largest banks will participate in a pilot climate scenario and that term um, the climate scenario analysis climate scenario analysis exercise uh, designed to enhance the ability of supervisors and firms to measure and manage climate related financial risks. Uh, scenario analysis in which the resilience of financial institutions is assessed under different hypothetical climate scenarios is an emerging tool to assess climate related financial risk. That climate risk, that, what, they're, what they're talking about, it sounds very similar if you look at their definitions to uh, the, the Chinese the CCP social credit system. Uh, there will be no capital or supervisory implications from the pilot. Um, goes on to say the scenario analysis can assist firms and supervisors in understanding how climate related financial risks may manifest and different from historical experiences. Um, many people believe that this this uh, is a Trojan horse and so that and that the ESG this ESG system which is the environmental social and governance um, is a Trojan horse to open the door for uh, a social credit system and it really it is already a social credit system and ESG already exists in the United States it's been around for a few years uh, it's it's only on the, the the big corporate level financial level government level it's it's not really affecting individuals like you and I 
um, but it definitely paves the way for that to happen. And if you're not familiar with ESG, I encourage you to look into it. Um, one person that stands out as really trying to wake people up about it is Glenn Beck. He's done a, a ton of work on ESG, so that'd be someone to look to. Um, this, this, what they're doing is, is, a, little, is a little disturbing. Um, it goes on to say, uh, yeah, it's here. Of course, it's just a scenario, but the Fed pilot program is set to launch in early 2023 early 2023 so we're talking just a few months away uh, if you remember back just a few weeks ago uh, the fed made an announcement that in mid-september they were doing a uh, kind of a pilot program a, a a study a test on their new fed now program which is going to be launching you know like next year also so and then the fed now is the is the precursor or the opening the the pandora's box basically to CBDCs. And then now you have this social credit system that they're working on and it, it's it's all connected folks. This is if, if you if you if you haven't gotten it yet, if you haven't figured it out yet that um, a big part of what they're doing, a big part of this whole great reset plan and and uh, the, this agenda 2030 and all this environmental stuff that they talk about all the time because they want you to think. They really want you to believe that these people in charge really do care about our planet, that, they, that they're just good-hearted people and they care about your future, they care about your children, your grandchildren's future. They want them to grow up in a wonderful planet that's clean and, and, and everyone has a chance to be equal and that you know everyone has a good, safe, secure life. That's what they want people to believe. The reality is, is something very much different. They want absolute control over you, not just your physical body, but they want control over your mind, and I believe very fully, control over your soul. Uh, and what we're seeing with these, th this, this right here, with the money, because that's that's a big control. You want to control someone's body, you know. You want to control their their physical, the things that they do and the things that they're able to do. One of the easiest ways to do that is to con have complete control of their money. This is something that um, uh, philosophers, uh, political, uh, social philosophers in the in the past, I don't think they could even envision the technology that exists today. Even you know, going back to you know 1984 and Brave New World, where they were you know writing these these fictional uh, futuristic novels. I don't think they could even come up with um, this type of technology in, in their minds, to where. Your money can be controlled down to the very penny. You know they can control how much value it is. They can hyperinflate or deflate uh, your your currency. They can say Joe over here, he's he's doing real good with his environmental stuff. He drives his little you know electric vehicle and he abides by all the laws and he donates to all the Greenpeace organizations and and he eats lots of bugs um, and and he he's not some extremist political you know. Uh, a patriot type of person so so his money now is worth you know a dollar 25 on the dollar now you know this guy over here you know he's a he's a crazy gun toting bible thumping pro-life uh you know red meat eaten uh survivalist type of person he's bad so we're gonna make his money worth 85 cents on the dollar or 75 cents on the dollar and they have a way of controlling it that way they also have a way of controlling it by saying well you know you have you have reached your monthly allotment for food this month you know you can't buy any more food so you can't bulk up anymore you can't stock up on food you're only able to get just enough food every month to feed your family maybe if you're lucky uh you you've only you only get so much uh, credits for gasoline each month uh guns that's just out of the you know the out of the equation i mean they're already working on that now that the credit card companies are going to be reporting to governments who's buying guns and where they're buying them. Uh, so it's just a matter of time to where they shut that function off so that you can't even purchase them or ammunition or uh, other things. This is absolute complete control of our lives and they are working on it. This isn't some conspiracy theory or some futuristic idea that they're hoping for. They're planning on making these things real, like real, in your face, it's happening, there's, there's nothing to deny you know, over the next year or two. I mean, this this is what they're wanting. 
uh, we're seeing the, the current US dollar skyrocket. Uh, a lot of people think that's great. Oh, it's awesome, US dollar. Well, usually when it spikes like this, it's right before it crashes. Um, and this time it could be a, a very devastating crash because there's so many other things going on. Uh, and it would be very interesting if it, it was just the coincidence that the paper US dollar crashed right as they unveiled this you know, digital stuff and digital currencies and, and marks and, and all the other you know, things that, that go along with it with their you know, social credit scores and, and digital IDs and everything else. This is becoming a very real thing, folks. It's, it's not something to, to, to deny it and to, to think that, well, you know, they may try it, but it's never gonna take hold. Really? What, what is there to stop them? You know, the people revolting against it? Well, they already control the money system. So they can do what they want. You know, it's not like our money is, is, has real intrinsic value so that it, it's out of their control. It, it doesn't. The, the US dollar has, you know, we have no control over it and they can crash it any moment they, that they want. And, you know, you and your little group of people can believe that, well, we'll just still be trading US currency m amongst us. But at some point, someone in your little group has to take that currency to the bank and cash it in or make a deposit because they have bills to pay outside your little group. And when they do and it's worthless, then the, the use of that currency, whatever currency you choose, it rapidly loses its value. At some point, the only, you know, a currency, all a currency is is a promissory note, okay? And so if your currency, whether it's US or foreign currency or one that you make up in your community, if it's not backed by something, if there's not some kind of, you know, intrinsic value to it, that it's backing, by, it's backed by something, then it's, it's never gonna succeed, you know, because it's just a promissory note that you'll pay them gold, silver, you know, beans, salt, bullets, whatever it is. Uh, and they know that. They know that they control us because they control our money. And so this is another huge step, I believe. You know, six largest banks are going to be participating in this little, this little pilot program. And I'm sure that they'll just continue it on as long as it's successful. And, and they're usually pretty good at ensuring things like this are successful. Um, already the vast majority of Americans uh, don't even use currency. They already use a digital form of money on their credit cards and their debit cards and scanning the little phone and paying through their Apple Pays and all that kind of stuff. So it's not a big transition for them. Um, if you look at statistics and stuff, very few people anymore carry currency. And if they do, it's very little currency. Uh, even very wealthy people, they don't carry a lot of currency on them. So it's not going to take very much to convince the American people that this is a better system, uh, that it's, it's, it's easier and, and it it's, has you know, a greater chance of not crashing and not inflating and all this. They'll tell you all these lies. This is their plan. This is what they're trying to do. It doesn't take a lot of research to figure this out. Uh, so, so we now know that the Federal Reserve is, is working on a pilot plan that very much mimics the Chinese social credit system. Uh, they're doing that with six of the top banks in the United States. Um, when is the day that they make that um, something that happens for everyone with every bank? I don't know. Uh, but if, if they're working on this by the first of next year, uh, who knows what will happen by the end of uh, you know, next year, middle of next year, uh, it could certainly continue because already, just in the last 30 days, the amount of information that's come from the Federal Reserve indicating that they are pushing this. There's been several different things that they've talked about in press releases and stuff and announcements. Uh, so it's obvious that they're pushing this. And folks, you need to get ready. You need to get your houses in order. Uh, build your communities and, and work on your own self-sufficiency. Folks, prepare mentally, physically, and spiritually. Thank you for watching, and I'll catch you in the next video.